Norway is quickly becoming a major European cycling destination. With the Tour of Norway and the Arctic Race of Norway already established as staples on the men's cycling calendar, the Ladies' Tour of Norway is flying the flag in women's sport. For many years there was only UCI races for the men in, in Norway and now we got also a race for women. So it's good for the, um, the young girls also in Norway that they can like work towards this race. And yeah, it's good for the media. As a local girl, yeah, I really enjoy it. It's, uh, I like the courses and yeah, the people here, they're very supportive. <laughs> so for me, it's really a great race. It's like grown up here <laughs> and also because yeah, my dad started uh, start this race and he's the, the leader of this race. And also now my boyfriend's in their organization. <laughs> so it's special. <laughs> With the Ladies' Tour of Norway now in its third year, the development of the UCI Women's World Tour has been a big target for the race organisers, cycling being one of the fastest growing sports in the country. It's uh, three and a half years ago, uh, together with uh, Heidi uh, Stenbo Kokstad. We think it was we were ready for a UCI race, a race in, the, in Norway too. We have a lot of good men, men's race. So we started three and a half years ago and uh, the first edition was in 2014. I think to, to have a growth for the women and they, uh, they, they deserve it. Uh, we have a, a very big interest for cycling in Norway uh, and it's, uh, it's growing also for women and that's naturally that they also have some good competitions. Both to, be, uh, to, to, to cooperate with the, with the international teams but also for, for a growth for the national teams in Norway. We have a long-term uh, strategy uh, thinking uh, and we have applied for uh, the Women's World Tour uh, next year and we have started uh, talking about how we are able to, to, to organize it. So hopefully we are ready for the World Tour next year. To reach UCI Women's World Tour status takes a lot of preparation, with planning getting underway over a year before the race starts, but it's over its three years so far the race has moved from strength to strength. We already started thinking about next year uh, back in May this year when we applied for uh, for the dates for next year. So, so yeah, I will think uh, immediately on Monday after this race is concluded, we will uh, start to to look for 2017, and we want to grow as a race and. Uh, we are aiming for the definitely top. It's a kind of a step-up plan. Uh, we have a group of uh, 18, 10 people working mainly from February. And then it's step up from uh, April, May, June, uh, July. And of course, uh, the weekend for the race. And totally for the weekend for the race, we have 330 people uh, in the organizing committee. So it's quite heavy. In the beginning, uh, races for women in, in, in Norway was not so well known. So uh, I think we started uh, more or less uh, zero uh, with nothing. So uh, we, have, but, uh, we have built up a good communication with, uh, with the cities, uh, with the counties and also the government. So uh, the three levels, cities, counties and government, they support the race uh, and they will be supported also in the future. The learn is that uh, we, have, we, have not, we have many things uh, to improve, uh, but I think we improve every year. So uh, we have some hiccups in the organization, of course, but uh, mainly I, I think it's uh, running very well this year. But uh, if we will uh, like to have a growth, uh, we, have, we have to stabilize the organization and continuously uh, working with it. So uh, if we have the same person into the organization next year, I think we are able to, to improve. But the strength of any race is the racing itself. And on the final day, both overall victory and a stage win were up for grabs. Lucinda Brandt began the day as leader at the start in Svindesund, but with bonus seconds available on the finishing laps in downtown Holden, a group of five riders formed an attack and began to eat into her advantage. Anuska Costa of Rabo Liv beat the rest to win the stage, with her compatriot Brandt doing enough to secure overall victory. But even with the results decided and the champagne finished at the race, the celebrations continued in the town of Holden. The finish area in Holden, that's where the race originally started uh, three years ago. So we are working closely with the community of Holden and uh, we know, uh, I think that's the city where we have the most backing from the from, yeah, spectators and uh, everything. So Holden is uh, really the heart of this race.
I try to cooperate with uh, a lot of uh, other uh, festivals and uh, other things happening in, in the cities where we are located, the races. And we have concerts, we have musicals, we have uh, even festivals for, uh, for uh, uh, American cars. Uh, so I try to, to build a, 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 you could say, a package, uh, a big event, uh, not only a race from A to B. We, we like to present uh, Norway. We think we live in a very beautiful country and to see the coastline and everything. Tonight we, uh, we have uh, invited a lot of the teams to a boat trip to see the beautiful coastline in Norway and Sweden. So that's, I think uh, they, they deserve to have also something more than, uh, than only a race.